a little bit more. Oh, a little bit too much. Okay. There we go. And let's put a website um, here. All right. So what were we doing yesterday? Um, so yeah, we were, we were converting <coughs> our code, um, to leverage like page objects, um, to leverage the page object pattern. Um, and the recap of that is, is, um, basically it helps you separate <coughs> your like test code, like things that tell, um, that's telling like the browser what to do. Like you should click this, you should enter this text. Um, so we're separating that kind of behavior, like what we want the test to do with how it does it. So the implementation details goes into the page objects. So we basically anything that has to do with the sign in page, we put it inside. Um, we're not using classes cause I don't see a reason to use it yet. Maybe, um, Maybe it's a better way to organize it because I know other languages will do that. I know Selenium Python example shows it with classes, but so far modules work just as well. Um, all we really care about is just that um, there's some shared um, interactions that we can use, like filling out fields. Um, but I will say like classes do make sense, uh, especially if you think like, hey, this page this site only has like one page, a sign page and a sign page contains attributes like it's locators, um, it's title, things like that. And then also actions that you can do on the page. So a class does make sense to model a sign page, but we will see in the future if we need to convert, um, it's kind of a learning process. We're just doing it this way and to see how things go. And then if we learn better ways, we'll just do it later. So, so far mm, this works. So we'll see how it goes. All right. So sign page should be all done for the most part. Um, this is all the stuff that we needed to use. We didn't need to use anything else. Um, homepage will be adding more stuff. What was our to do? Get rid of passwords. Okay. Not yet. Leverage up. So this is what we're doing right now. Leverage uh, object model. <coughs> Figure out if we will use fixtures for sign up test. Yes, yeah, so that's what we were designing yesterday too. Because we can use uh, fixtures <coughs> to set up a sign up state. Because um, we were looking at this test. So we were trying to convert this test. Test user can purchase item. Mm. <coughs> So I would say, let's try to just convert it as we normally would. And then afterwards, let's take a step back and look at and see if it actually looks like the right thing to do. So we're going to sign in. We're not going to use this method. Um, well, technically we could. Mm. So what's the first thing that we do? Um, we, sh we always start out with a blank page. So we always need to go to the right page, um, which is the home page. So let's change this to home page dot. And we got to import this module home page dot navigate to page. So now we're on the home page. Then we can go to science. See, this one shouldn't have gone to the science page. Um, so I'm going to replace all of this with, um, oops, with basically this, uh, code that uses the page up sign page, um, object, um, to basically do the same thing. Yeah. You know? So technically I can just do homepage and navigate to page and then we sign in, mm, featured item equals to So now we're logged in and mm, we should be, so after we sign in, we should be at the, my account page. So that's, uh, uh, 
So I guess that's where classes may be more explicit, right? Because if you want to use the um, my account interactions, you would need to like instantiate or create a my account page before you can use it. And if you do that, it's very clear that after the step, you need to be on my account versus right now I go to the homepage. So this is obvious just because of the naming of the method that I'm going to the homepage. But um, then you kind of have to know in your head or have experience with the app to know that, hey, um, there's a sign button there that we're clicking. Mm. So yeah. So I, Mm. Okay. Let me think about this, but uh, let's just continue. Let's just finish converting this first and then it will look a lot nicer. And that way we can think high level, like what we're doing. So featured items equals located at featured items. I think this is in this, right? Yeah. So what are we trying to do here? Oh, it is a lot of logic. Okay. So I think here is we're trying to, um, we're trying to add an item to a cart. Yeah. So all this code is home at to, okay. So all this code is doing is just adding an item to a cart. So we can kind of, um, be like add random item and let me just show so let's go to home page add random item to cart mm. that's all we're doing um so we can technically pull this out is this uh is this right that looks wrong um i think that's it okay Add random item to cart. So we'll go to like a random item here and we'll just add it to cart. <coughs> and let's see if this works out of the box. I think it does. My mic keeps falling slowly. I don't know how it's happening. Well, what happens when you buy a $20 mic? Um, okay. Um, think this is good. We don't need to change anything. Guess we need a space there. Um, page dot locators. All right. So one thing I do want to do, you see how we're like using page dot locator. I want to actually add some getters. Um, is this how I do a comment in Python? How do I do a multi-line comment? Is it this? I forgot how to do a multi line comment Python. Yeah, I'm not trying to do that. Mm. Triple co Oh, okay. Not this. It's this. Okay. There we go. So let's, uh, Let's put some um, element getters, like um, element getters. So basically, sometimes we want to get an element on that page. And so far, we only have three elements. So let's get element um, I guess you would call it featured items list, right? And passing a page and all it's doing is you're just returning the locator. But if we do it like this, anytime we need to, um, like if we want to update this name again, we don't have to go to every single time, every single place where you use it. We can just update this, uh, um, this little API that we created for ourselves. Um, so we just call this method and, um, we have 
the locator. So that's a uh, a nicer way to work with uh, retrieving elements. So what's the second element that we have? Home add to cart buttons, and we're getting a list of add to cart buttons, right? Yeah. There's um. Mm, get element featured. Um, I should add to cart buttons list. Mm, I don't know. Maybe we will end up using it one day, but we definitely use it here. So let's just pull it out. Okay. Mm so get rid of that. All right. So we pulled out those methods. Do we need something else? Home proceed to checkout button. I don't think we use this yet, but uh, yeah, so we don't use that yet, but we might as well create it, right? So we know we have like three elements to work with on the home page. Get element, um, proceed to checkout button, and let's just do that. Okay, so now we have that as well, and we'll use it later. And then what are these things? We'll call them page interactions. This is how we interact with the page. <coughs> page interactions, um, page element getters. All right, all right. Cool, so we can navigate to a page. We can add a random, random item to cart. What else can we do? So we can replace all of this with um, homepage dot add random item to cart. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we add a random item to cart. I should test this before I proceed. Um, just make sure it's not broken, but let's make our lives harder. All right, so home proceed to checkout button goes this. Okay, so this is where we click on the all right, so this is where we click on the um, checkout button. Uh, I'm trying to think, should I add it in here? No, it's different. So what happens? So we add something to the card. All right, and then something and then a modal will pop up. So technically, 